Hi there, this is my commentary on chapter 16 of Lila and Inquiry into Morals by Robert M. Parsons. So it's a very short chapter. There isn't all that much to say simply because it's just a few pages. Obviously, it's pretty shocking what Lila and her friends seem to be planning. But there's something about it that just doesn't seem quite right. Is Lila really that bad? I mean, we know that she's sort of marginal and, and uh, biological and reactive and lives in the moment and looks for the next situation where she can get immediate needs taken care of. But is she really that bad? Is she really a criminal? It just doesn't seem like that's the case because, for example, Lila told Jamie that the captain's a nice man. And so why in the same breath is she going to plot to kill him? And we've been able to hear Lila's inner thoughts and nothing like this has come up at all. Mostly she's just trying to figure out how to get to Florida with him. So maybe it's just more reactivity in the moment, you know, shifting states of mind from one extreme state to another, which you often see in mental instability. Or maybe it's, um, and maybe it's the language of this, of this uh, you know, bohemian or fringe or petty criminal culture. Sure, they, they talk big, but they never actually act on that big talk to commit a big crime. So maybe it's setting up a framework for something smaller, like maybe taking his wallet or something. Though, so that's a that's a hard one to figure out. Paul said it was sort of a, a, a sort of a cultural language that they use, and I think that that might be right. I just can't imagine Lila really being a serious criminal. And we should point out the difference between intellect, which has come up a lot because there's the intellect uh, level and actual intelligence. So while none of these people, not Jamie, Lila, or Fatso, are intellectual, or at least it, it's not revealed that they are, we don't know, but you know, we're only going to know what we know in this book because that's the only place they live. There's, a, there's nothing really wrong with their brains because it takes some brains to be to pull off these little crimes and to think in this very calculated way with all this planning and scheming. Like you have to coordinate things and resources like, for example, you need to be able to to navigate the underground economy, like where to sell boats where there's no questions asked. So despite what Phaedrus thinks of Lila's intellect, she's certainly not stupid. And Phaedrus can't really see this because his understanding, at least what it seems like so far, his understanding of intellect means intellectual, not this type of canny intelligence. You know, he's more used to the academic and technological intelligence. So I think it's important to point out that someone with an intellect, intellectual level that's undeveloped, like Lila, can still have perfectly good intelligence. There's something here that's worth noting, which is Jamie's declaration that he's no longer impressed by wealthy folks because he knows he has something better. So these denizens of New York City in the gritty 70s and 80s, you know, before Giuliani came in and bought, brought Disney to Times Square and just completely revamped New York into more of the corporate model that you see today. I was actually living there at the time. So these people are on the fringes of society in this gritty underworld, or it's not even an underworld in New York at the time. You know, there was a lot of that just on the surface. I mean, watch a movie like, you know, The French Connection to see what I'm talking about. So these are petty criminals and grifters, and I guess in the case of Lila, hookers. So Jamie points out that these swells and padded shoulders really want what they, these marginal grifters have and it's hard to believe but but there is something to it when you think about it so what is it what do they have living in the margins that upstanding citizens don't and so I think that if you think about it there's a certain uh, freshness and flexibility that people in the nine to five grind or even you know a, a lawyer making a ton of money who might not have so this is setting us up for what comes next and gives us also more insight into Lila's world because we see her functioning. This was her last boyfriend, by the way, is Jamie. So I hope that made sense, and I'll see you next time.